Welcome back to Snorkel, everybody. It's Daniel and Johnny for our weekly Game of Thrones reaction slash review slash discussion slash recap, whatever you want to call it. We're oh. here. <laughs> Season seven. Season seven, episode five. I can't speak because the show is so amazing. Um, yeah, I'm still like. So last week, obviously, we left off where the Dothraki with Daenerys and Drogon attacked the Lannister army. One of the best battle, like action sequences in the entire show, basically. And just in general, in entertainment. Uh, <laughs> um, this episode literally opens up. Uh, you see Jamie last season going to the bottom last of the season. lake. Last Last episode. Going to the bottom of the lake. Uh, Braun actually pops up out of the, the water river. and he pulls Jamie out of it. And they're kind of off to the side. And he's like, oh, I'm not messing with these dragons. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not down with this. So Braun's kind of, he's not out of the picture, obviously, but he's he's just not feeling this whole situation. He's and, basically trying to talk sense into Jamie because Jamie's, you know, he's fucking. The only reason he's going along with this shit so far is because he's in love with Cersei and he wants to make her happy. But now that he's come face to face with Danny and her dragon um, and her Dothraki, it's like, okay, he's woken up and he's going straight to, to King's Landing to tell her this shit's not going to work. They're going to beat us every single time, no matter what happens. We gotta figure some shit out. I don't know what it's gonna be, but we gotta figure the shit out. So Daenerys, yeah, is there with, with uh, Drogon, and they kind of march over all the remaining soldiers from the other opposite side, and she's like, the yeah, Lannisters. Bend the knee, and, you know, I'm not gonna kill you. If you don't bend the knee, I'm going to kill you right here, basically. So a couple guys get down, and then Drogon, you know, starts messing around in the background, and every, he roars. He roars, and yeah. some more guys go down, but of course, uh, the Tarleys are there, and they're not bending down, obviously. Yeah, Randall Tarley and Dickon, which they were both in the last episode, getting, you know, they're all over the fucking place, freaked out, of course, and uh, they, Randall says, no, nah, I'm not fucking doing this shit. So, and Tyrion's trying to talk sense into him, He's trying, to, and then Dickon, you know, he's not going to let his father die alone, and Tyrion is still trying to talk sense into him, and finally there's like, nope, we're fucking, like, we're not going along with this. So Danny shows no mercy no matter what Tyrion says, no matter what, how much he tries to get her to, like, see some, like, sense, basically. And, uh, yeah, she fucking executes them with Drogon, just melting them alive, basically. Yeah. Cut to... Yeah, that was pretty crazy. That was fucking intense, yeah. She, she really has some Cersei in her, to be honest with you. She... She has some of her dad in her. She's hell... She's hell-bent on getting people to bend the knee. I don't know what her fucking idea is with that, but... She wants to be considered the queen now, at this point, and she, anything less than that is execution, pretty much. So um, basically Cersei. Yeah, there, I mean, there's a, and then, okay, so the next bit, there's a, a really important part that kind of propels the entire episode where Bran is warging into these ravens and he's flying them uh, past the wall and he's looking for the, he's basically scouting. He's looking for the White Walkers. He sees them. There's a, a lot. <laughs> like, they're getting bigger and bigger, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're coming. They're getting very close to is Eastwatch, is the one where Tormund was sent earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he's like, well, this is fucked. So he, he's like, we gotta get these ravens out. We have got to like spread the word ASAP. There's like no more time for bullshitting. So he sends one to the Citadel. He sends one to, to uh, Danny. Um, Daenerys. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's like, that's kind of where things start getting interesting. And so back at Dragonstone, Danny returns from, you know, just fucking everyone up. Drogon actually, you know, comes in. He's like, he. He kind of like comes up on John. He like yeah. kind of walks over there, and he looks like kind of mean, and intimidating. And then yeah. John takes his glove off, and it's kind of a big moment because it's like it is a big moment. only Targaryens really can mess mm -hmm. with these dragons. And Drogon <laughs> looks more enamored with John than he does with Daenerys. Yeah, he's very, very friendly to him for the most part. It's it's an awesome moment, like you said. It's kind of a big moment. Um, also, at that, at that same time, Joro basically shows up. Yes. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm back. And she's like, oh, you cured yourself. And he's like, yeah, basically. He didn't mention Sam right in front of John. I mean, it could have changed. That would have been funny. Could have changed the whole conversation at, at that point, but he didn't. Yeah. Uh, they basically go into her little war room there, and she's there with Tyrion, Varys, yeah. John, Joro, um, Davos. Davos. Yeah. yeah, and that's at that, it's at that point in the room when everyone's like gathered that they discuss the letter which they had gotten from Bran. Um, and when John reads that, he's like... God, this we like this. This is done. Like we have, I've got to get back. We've got to do something. I'm gonna fight even with or without you at this point. Uh, so unless we make something happen right now, like peace, basically. And so Tyrion, he knows that this whole war that Danny is waging right now against Cersei isn't like it's really just kind of getting in the way of the bigger picture, which you know at this point is the White Walkers. And so he proposes an armistice, basically. Yeah, basically they come up with this plan to. 
Daenerys, you know, from a tactical standpoint, is afraid if she takes her troops up to the wall. Yeah. How are the Dothraki going to do up there anyway? Probably not that good. Yeah. <laughs> um, she, if she takes her dragons and her army up to the wall to defend, basically she's going to leave a, yeah. oh, a huge open space for Cersei to come up. Yeah. Because Cersei is still worried about her stupid political game, not realizing that the entire world is at stake. Yeah. And uh, she's just kind of afraid of giving up that ground there. Exactly. So basically their plan is send someone up to north of the wall, uh, steal or Bring capture a yeah. uh, White Walker, basically. <laughs> yeah. uh, which they said they did that in Winterfell once. Or not Winterfell, to... Uh, the wall, where Castle Jon was, yeah. yeah. Um, and bring it somehow to... They're uh, basically going to fucking capture it and tie it up like King's that. Landing, for all the way from north of the wall, and show it to Cersei. That's going to change her mind, basically, and then everybody's going to go fight the White Walkers. That sounds kind of convoluted. Uh, you know, with, there's so many moving parts to that, it's kind of like, holy shit. Well... I mean, they've run out of options. They've had fucking seasons to figure this shit out, and now they're here. So I guess that's what it's come down to. But um, the one of the bigger like parts of this plan is also smuggling Tyrion into King's Landing. And, of course, who's going to smuggle him in? Davos, like the king of smuggling. And uh, and so he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak you in, but you better, fucking, you better make it happen because if shit goes down, I'm not going to be able to save you or myself. Um, so he takes Tyrion in to go meet Jamie. Yeah, to go meet Jamie in secret. So um, while that's going on, he also goes to Flea Bottom by himself. And lo and fucking behold, seasons later, Gendry is there, still fucking smacking the iron and making swords and stuff. And uh, like, it's just been such a running joke for years now. Like, Gendry's still out there rowing that boat away from Dragonstone. Yeah. And uh, he's there. He looks older, obviously. He's, he looks huge. He looks. Fucking just like a young Christian Bale. I can like, see that. He's, I was like, holy shit. He's jacked. He's beefed up. And uh, and so he basically recruits him. He's like, there's this war coming. I think you could be put to use if you come with us. And so Gendry's like, I've been waiting ever since you sent me away in that boat. Um, and then meanwhile, Jamie and Tyrion have their little show. Jamie and Tyrion are having a conversation below earlier in the season where Cersei and, mm -hmm. is it Kyber, Kyburn? It's kind of hard to pronounce. Kyburn, yeah. Wow. Um, showed her the, the scorpion weapon. Yeah, with all the dragon skulls are down there. Yeah, the, the, the room with the dragon skulls and stuff like that. Um, they're basically having a conversation. Tyrion starts bringing up the dad. Very Jamie, emotional. Jamie's like, don't talk about her dad. You know, you're, And Tyrion was just like, made a good point. He was going to kill me. He knew I didn't do it. And he yeah. hates me just because of who I am. Yeah. Um, and Jamie, or, yeah, Jamie is sympathetic to that. I yeah. think they love each other as brothers. Exactly. Um, and basically he just says, you know, we're going to have an armistice. We're going to lay down arms for now. There's a huge thing going on up at the wall. We need to defend this. And Jamie at this point is just like, he knows now, I think, because he was like, I, I feel like people don't want to believe in the White Walkers, but seeing now that Daenerys is legit and has <laughs> Dothraki people yeah. in Westeros and she has a dragon, I think now he's believing, like, oh, shit, this might be real. Yeah, and, um, exactly. So, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So, basically, I think he's bought into it at this point. So, he has to go. goes and goes to tell Cersei that he met up with Tyrion. She says she knew, which... I don't know how she would have found out, but... Um, well, she has all the fucking whispers out there. Yeah, basically. Collecting the rumors. But. So she said she let it happen, um, and that she, basically at this point she's re ready, ready to have an armistice and lay down arms against yeah. Daenerys because she knows that they're outnumbered every single way um, and have no chance of winning an actual arms race, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good point, like you brought up. It's not just strategically, not only does it just make sense to move away from this war for the time being and deal with this bigger threat, even if they're not convinced of it, because Jamie knows they're not going to be able to win if they can keep fighting right now. So why not? It doesn't hurt them to stop this and go deal with the White Walkers with everyone else. She also says that she's pregnant with Jamie's she, kid. She, I believe his fourth, correct? Yeah. Fourth child, yeah. but this time they're not saying it's Robert Baratheon's. Obviously, he asked her, Who, "Who's going to be the dad? Who are you going to say is the dad?" And I was thinking she would say something. Yeah. But as she showed earlier in the season, she, she doesn't give a shit. She is not give a fuck. That people know that there, she's just with Jamie, her bro yeah. Uh, twin brother. <laughs> yeah, it's. it's um, so she basically she's going to say it's going to be you, and he really liked that. He was like kind of turned on by that, yeah. and like he really loves Cersei, even though his heart was warm. With that. Jamie, God, such, I was. He's a seesaw character, man. He, you love him, and sometimes I'm here just like wow. you're with Cersei. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's almost like he's dynamic. No, it's just, it's, I don't understand that. He knows he's going to ask to kill Cersei, I feel like, at some point. It's like every time, it's like, every time they get out, they bring me back in. Like, he can't get away from Cersei. He can't get away from, like, what is in his heart, and he loves Cersei, and he wants, like, now that he has a kid in the picture, that just draws him in deeper. I just, he's not going to have a happy ending. It's going to be tragic, no matter what happens. 
Um, but for now, he's going to settle with being with Cersei. They're going to go forward with this armistice. And for now, they're going to live, it looks like. Now, hopefully, I mean, maybe he'll go um, up to the wall and have to fight these White Walkers. I mean, he, is, he is the commander of the army, so uh, assuming that they work together, that's what's going to happen. But Cersei will never, ever work side by side with them. I guarantee. She, she just won't do it. She'll play it like she is, and then she'll, like... Mm. I, I don't know. She's, I don't know. I, I mean, I could definitely see that happening, but um, it, it's going to be interesting to see. So another part of the episode, obviously, uh, Littlefinger is still at Winterfell. John's not there, so Cersei, <laughs> not Cersei, Sansa and Arya are there, obviously, with Bran. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Bran already. Uh, Sansa's kind of finding herself not, uh, she's not prepared, I guess, to lead, which is pretty clear because she's never had to do that before. Yeah. And Arya's kind of like, why are you letting them talk crap about John? But yeah. she's also putting a, a plot in place for... I, could, I was kind of confused by that. Was she trying to put a plot in place for Sansa to take over from John? That's what it made. It Who? Was, Arya. No. She was like, like she was just like, the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> she she just, loves John way more than Sansa. I know. I don't know. It just seemed very strange to me. But anyways, I mean, she's she knows what Sansa's playing at, even though Sansa may not even know it herself, because at this point, Sansa has been involved with all this Game of Thronesy shit for you know, the past however many seasons, and she hasn't ever been out and getting these magical powers, she hasn't been assassin <laughs> training, she's been playing the game. So, I think even subconsciously, she may be kind of like, you know, John might not come back, who knows? Maybe I should try to start making a power move. And of course, you have Littlefinger, who, she, he doesn't interact with either of them in this episode, really, but he's in the shadows, and he's <laughs> making his little fucking deals. I don't know what the fuck, he gets this little, like, scroll. It looks like some, like, sort of message being sent somewhere. But I can't, I don't know, is it an older, it has to be an older it's one. It's from Winterfell's, like, library, basically, yeah. and uh, he had someone look it up, some some type of information. Yeah. But then he also, it almost made it seem like he planted it there, to get, because he was being so obvious with his actions, and, like, yes. his little conversations, and he's like, <sighs> God damn it. And then he was so, like, loud in the hallway. I agree. He's yeah. like, sir, this is uh, the scroll from <laughs> blah, 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 and he's like, this is the only one in Winterfell, right? <laughs> So, God, I fucking hate He's, I, like, I hate him, but I can't help but admire how just clever he is. So, he gets this little scroll. He goes into the room. The guy goes away. Littlefinger's now in the room for, like, <laughs> ten seconds. He comes back out and walks down the hallway. Arya, who's been sneaking on, uh, sneaking on him the whole time, basically, breaks into his room, finds in his mattress, which right when she walked in, I was like, I bet it's under the mattress. It was in the mattress, not under the mattress. And she gets a little scroll, and it says something. I'm sure someone online has a, a solid picture of it. Um, but the, you, the only thing you can make second. out is that it says from Sansa. But that doesn't. How does that make sense? Because if it's supposed to be an older thing, he, that's why I feel like it's a plant. He's, something is going on. I can't figure it out exactly. Maybe if you guys have a better idea and like something we don't remember, let us know in the comments. But it's it's a it's a bad situation. Winterfell is like in disarray right now. So Arya leaves with the note, and then Littlefinger's like. Yeah, he's he's like he like comes out. You're like, yeah, Arya, she's she's getting down to the bottom of this. And then as she walks away, you see you see Littlefinger's just like, yeah, Littlefinger's playing her from mm -hmm. behind the fucking corner. Littlefinger's God. playing her. Um, the other place I think we need to hit up is the Citadel. Sam is still doing his scribing, and um, he like kind of stand. There's this cool little scene where he stands up to like the headmaster basically and says, you know, you have so much power and respect. If you just believed and sent out word to these people. You would be able to like get enough people to save the Seven Kingdoms from they, the but, White Walkers. Yeah, but they don't believe, of course, like everybody else. They don't believe that the White Walkers are back. Yeah, and they don't want to help at all. And they don't even tell Sam that his brother and uh, his brother and Zag got executed. Yeah, which he probably I don't. He wouldn't give a shit. I don't think. I feel like you'd be sad just because you would. Anybody would be sad, even if you don't have a relationship with them. Yeah. But it's just like you'd probably just be like, oh, that's good. He did not like his dad. Yeah, no. Yeah. And who knows? They didn't touch on the brother thing. I don't think really. Um, and then there's another. Oh my God. Like, one of the biggest moments in the entire show, low-key, him and Gilly are up in the middle of the night, like, scribing away, and she's going through these old history books, and he's really annoyed. Like, he doesn't want to listen to anything she's fucking saying. She's talking about the steps and the fucking bowel movements and all this other stuff. And she talks about an annulment for Rhaegar Targaryen, meaning that Rhaegar and Lyanna are, like, an official couple, and that Jon would be an official Targaryen son to him, and not a bastard, and he would be the heir to the throne, not Daenerys. Yeah. Which is, like, one of the biggest moments, like, in the show as far as the heritage and all the, like, the power moves and whatnot. And no one, he, Sam doesn't even give a fucking fuck. He doesn't, I don't think he even hears her. Which, I'm actually rewatching the first season right now. I just watched the first three episodes mm -hmm. uh, within the last few days. And I believe it's the second, or possibly third, I believe it's the second episode where they're leaving, uh, 
uh, the Lannisters with um, Ned are going to, they're, and they're all leaving. Winterfell. John's with them. King's he, Landing. Yeah, and then they kind of split off and they yeah. say their goodbyes. John's going up to the wall, obviously, with Benjamin. Are you talking about the last thing Ned says to him? Yeah, it'll, basically, yeah. he's just like, you know, he's like, what are you telling me about my mom? And he was like, well, you, you, uh, <laughs> I see you again. I will. he's like, the last thing he says to John, obviously, in person or ever, is, you know, you don't have my last name, but you have my blood. And he but knows. He's accurate. He fucking knows what, yeah. you know, what's going on. And it's so fucking accurate. And I told Chris, my wife, Christina, um, like, like, who freaking knew? Like, George R. R. Martin knows, and the showrunners know, but it's just like, oh my god. It's been, it's been really cool to see everything develop, and now, like, there's these moments that are happening now. It's like, all of it has been building up to this, and god, I just, I want John to find out so badly. I want everyone to find out. John is, like, my favorite character, obviously, and so I just really want him to get, like, his due and realize he's not a bastard, and he has, like, this huge, huge like, heritage. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's gonna be very curious to see what happens. Um, and and then to close off the Citadel, Sam and Gilly like up and fucking leave in the middle of the night with all he the go, books and stuff. He goes into the library, Sam, he has everything he takes packed a bunch up. Of shit, yeah. Takes a bunch of books, scrolls, all this different stuff, and he leaves and that's it. And there was one there was one little interesting moment where he looks up at the thing and it's like, Oh, I wonder if he's Is really taking a look at that thing. <laughs> yeah. They kinda of pan over it. And yeah. It's just like that's that's we all know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but um, me and Johnny have our theories, but you can find that online. I don't want to ruin it. Yeah, me. but um, anyway, yeah, they leave, and they, there's no clear indication of where they're going, but you have to imagine he's going north. He wants to try to meet up with John again, probably, yeah, and help him, help him out with the White Walker situation. Um, it's going to be very interesting Interesting to see what happens. Um, and then finally, to wrap up the episode, Becca Dragonstone, John, Jorah, Gendry, Davos are all getting packed up to leave. They're you know heading off to be on the wall. And uh, they have, they all say their goodbyes to Daenerys, and the the sexual tension here between Jon and Daenerys was quite palpable to say the least. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> between aunt and uh, nephew, but, freaking gross, is it? Um, yeah. it? But it was very interesting, um, and then it was also kind of cool to see Jon and Gendry like finally meet, and it's they they have no idea, but their father is like fought to the death, and like his dad. It's it's cool because Gendry has like a war hammer, like he doesn't like using swords. Which is obviously what Robert did, and he used a warhammer to kill John's dad. You know, it's just it's so cool. These little things are happening now. Yeah, yeah. They end up getting in the boat and going off, and then they go up to one of the other castles on the wall, Eastwatch. Eastwatch, where, Tor where Tormund is sent at the very beginning of the season. Exactly. And they meet up there, and Tormund. They see Tormund for the first time in uh, episodes. Yeah, yeah. Since episode one or two, I believe. I think so. Yeah. And he was uh, basically just like, "Yo, are you guys crazy? Do you have more men?" And they're like, "No, yeah. that's it." They just kind of look around at each other like, "This is all we got." <laughs> Uh, and then there, he's like, well, you're not the only ones. <laughs> and they go, and we, I was always wondering what happened to the Hound, because we haven't really seen him this yeah. season. Yeah, yeah, and, and Beric, Beric Dondarrion. Yep, that little group, group and crew of guys is uh, locked up in the prison there. <laughs> uh, I guess Tormund probably threw him in there. Yeah, I'm because they, I guess they got caught trying to go across, because um, that's where the Lord of Light is sending them. And so they pretty much, there's back and forth, they're arguing, Gendry doesn't like this one guy, Jorah doesn't like this other guy. Um, and, but they're like, John's like, we're on the same side, and he's like, they're like, well, you know, wow, how are we on the same side? He's like, well, we're all breathing, so, yeah, exactly. uh, which is completely accurate. Um, so they go down into the tunnel, they're all geared up, it's like the fucking dream team of, like, fighters, it's badass. John, it's Jon Snow. Gendry. Gendry, oh, he's not, he's, whatever. Jorah. He's, <laughs> he's the son of one of the greatest fighters of all time. I know what I'm just saying, like, compared to everybody else. Joro, the Hound, Tormund. Tormund. Gendry, like you said, Beric Dondarrion. It's just like, yeah, it's, those four guys alone. I'm just like, holy shit. Yeah, and I, I was telling him if you just threw in Brienne and like even Arya and maybe even Jamie with two hands, that would be in Braun. That would be like the fucking ultimate. But, but these guys literally are like walking out. Like I said, it was like the Avengers, and uh, uh, yeah. it's like John in the front, obviously, and then there's like three guys on each side of them. Yeah. And they're just walking out with their swords. Like yeah, there was actually a moment where John turns to Jorah and he's like, he's like, what are we? Some kind of Suicide Squad? <laughs> oh fuck no. <laughs> But no, like, yeah, it's like, shit is about to pop the fuck off, and that's how the episode ends. The preview for next week looks hype as shit. It's yeah. the second to last episode of the season, which notoriously has been huge, um, the entire series. There's always a big battle. Um, it's, this is it. Winter is, like, here. Like, they're going into it. Man, I'm so scared for these guys. They're not all going to make it back. Like, there's no question. They're not, no, they're all definitely not no. making it back. Uh, I would be shocked if some of these guys made it back. I don't think Jorah's gonna make it. It seemed like when he was leaving Danny, it kind of seemed like it was the last time. Possibly. I, I think that, like, little, like, few, like, time that they had back together was kind of I it. feel like the Hound and Gendry and John might be the only ones. 
I think John and Genji are definitely safe. I can see the Hound dying here, just because he's like kind of come back and he's gonna like maybe he'll give his life, you know. Um, Beric Dondarrion, I don't know. He's died so many times. Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe he'd be brought back. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be. God, I hope Tormund doesn't die. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be intense. I'm super excited. I'm scared. With this episode, though, what, what do you give it as a grade? Um, to me, this was just as good as last week. There were so many awesome moments of reconnections with the characters. There was some great dialogue. Um, I, everything's getting like really intense. Um, I'm going to give it a 9.5. I, I think I'm going to agree. I'm going to give it a 9.5. There weren't any action sequences. No. but There man, didn't need to be. There didn't need to be. It was so tightly done. The plot's really like propelling forward now. Shit was going down. I literally like gasped like four or five different times because of the, all this stuff. But <sighs> Man, the show. One thing I will say, I feel like... I know they didn't want this show to go on for 10 years or 11 or 12 or yeah. more. But I really, really feel like... They need an extra five or six episodes. They could have slowed down the pacing a little bit. They're, but the, if the episodes are extra long, I think I'll be all right with it. I know, but it's stuff's happened so fast. You say people a half a season or a whole season to get from one point to the other. Just in this episode alone, Daenerys came back from basically from <coughs> King's Landing, almost basically. On her dragon. On her, yeah, to Dragonstone. Jon went from Dragonstone to north of the Wall in literally one episode, not even. Well, but the timelines aren't like... I know, but no, I, I know that, but I'm just saying... Before, it was kind of ambiguous. Was this all happening in the span of a, if, of a week? Did it take a month? They did say just going from Winterfell to King's Landing, it, literally in the first episode, what took a month. So yeah. that kind of gives you, you know, it took years. And they've mentioned it in, I think, even in this episode or last episode. Mm -hmm. You know, they've said, oh, for years I did this. And I was like, oh, that was like a season in the show. So this has been going on for like five to ten years probably. I can see what you're, where you're coming from. Like, it's definitely, the pace is picking up. There's no question about it. But at the same time, I'm like... Fuck off with all the timeline shit, like, pacing it properly. Like, this is just so good right now. I really can't complain that much, but I do see where you're coming from. Hopefully, the season finale is going to be extra long. Hopefully, maybe all the episodes next season will the, be extra long. They the were talking about The series finale, hopefully. It was two hours long. be like two hours long. It'd be lit. But, um... Uh, I might... Okay. Yeah. I just look at it. There's it's literally, so as, as of far as we know right now, unless they change something, there's eight episodes left. So, literally, yeah. they have to wrap all this shit up in eight episodes. Like, how the fuck are they going to do that? They better if I can make them extra long. That's all I'm gonna say. Like, like I'll be bumped out if they don't. I was thinking they were gonna come to a conclusion in Westeros. You know, that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Politically first, yeah. and then the winter is here. No, that's exactly what I was thinking. I, I said this season they're gonna wrap up the Daenerys versus Cersei thing. They're gonna take King's Landing. Everything's gonna be cool, and then they're gonna go deal with the North with Jon and all that. But here it's like, no, nope. We're the thing's done. We're gonna like chill out for a little bit. Go deal with this shit. So now I'm like. Are they really gonna go back and like have that big war after the White Walkers? No, there's no fucking way. That's what I'm saying. There's no way. So, God, it's kind of crazy. We're like, we might not even see that Daenerys like taking landing now. That's what I'm saying. It's like it it's makes gonna no be sense. crazy. Holy shit! It makes no sense. But either way, I don't know how. It that makes no sense. This episode was a ten out of ten. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me right now, or why they did it the way they did. But George R. R. Martin he has his ideas. So. Okay. Um, thank you guys for watching once again. Uh, two more episodes to go. I'm, I don't know if Johnny's going to be in a recap next week or the weekend. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. I'm going away to college, so... Uh, He's not going to be for too far away, but like an hour, hour and a half. But on a, sat on a Sunday night, the show's on at 9. We'll see what happens. We'll see. But you guys, you and Christine at least, got it covered. Um, very exciting times ahead. <laughs> I, if I don't come back... <laughs> goodbye, I guess, for a little while. We're going to try for this, at least if he can't make it for, for, for next week. If the season finale, or the, yeah, the season finale, yeah. we're going to try to Skype or something, because I, it's going to be fucking insane. Yeah, it's going to be insane. Leave your comments below. Tell us what you thought about this episode. Tell us what you think about going forward, how you feel about the show right now. Um, it's, it's a good time to be a Game of Thrones fan. I think that's, like, kind of, like, some setup for me. So, uh, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, check out our other recaps for the season. And, uh, I think Dan's going to try to pull up, <laughs> pull up old Jamie when he had both hands. I was looking for Jon Snow and then I realized he, I think he's in a box somewhere. Well, that's no good. He's the best character. I just didn't want to take him out of the box. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching once again. Please subscribe and comment and do everything Johnny just said. Thank you.